I expect that law teachers who are here today or listening online share some common values about why we teach. Or perhaps, like some law students, we think that legal education needs igniting. <laughs> but I expect that we didn't go into law teaching because our aspiration was to efficiently sort our students for employer. I think instead we had some vision of whole and happy graduates who would think that they were looking forward to a career in which they would become increasingly whole and happy throughout their lives. That we didn't want to leave them broken like that. And we didn't want to leave them broken like this. The idea that we're training them well to respond to commands. I think that instead, we have an aspiration to help our students become something they want to be. We have a vision of people who are able to do creative problem solving about difficult and challenging problems, about new problems, whether those are intellectual or organizational or human ones. We also, I think, want our graduates to leave the law school feeling that they're already good at some things that will help them to be good lawyers, but that they intend to get better and better throughout their careers. And I expect that for us, we have a vision of law and lawyering that's more than about just us. That's about something beyond us, which maybe is just a single client or an issue we care about or something that we hope to do for our community or for the world. Now, I'm going to take eight minutes of your time to talk about self-determination theory. Self-determination theory is a body of theory that's been replicated and validated across cultures, contexts, there's a lot of literature. I can save some of my time today because there's already an excellent legal ed video that you can go to done by Michelle Stone and Burl Blasto. When you see these handwritten slides, there's some from that video, which is also the coolest software ever that you should check out. But that, these are the three basics we're going to talk about in self-determination theory. This also draws in part on an article I wrote with my colleague Catherine Klein and Professor Blaustone. So at the very end, I'll give you that citation. So if you want to read the research this all came from, you can find it. But both the article and this video draw in part on a popularized version of self-determination theory that was done by Dan Pink in this book, which is called Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us. Now in Pink's book, and he also has a very engaging TED talk, he talks about the application of self-determination theory to business management. And as he says in his TED talk, it makes him crazy that businesses are basically still looking to the idea of rewards and punishment, carrots and sticks, as the way you motivate employees to do things. And he draws on the research which shows that for the kinds of tasks that 21st century businesses need, which are by and large creative new ways to do things or innovative things to do them, that in fact extrinsic motivation is a, that this is not really the way to do it. So again, the linchpins are of these terms we'll talk about today are these three terms, autonomy, mastery, purpose. But a key distinction is between intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is come, what comes from within. When we look within ourselves and think about what we want, from our own sense of what's important. Now, extrinsic motivation is gold stars, trophies, rewards, bonuses, punishments. Or you could have the law school version. Grades, class rank, comparing ourselves to others, getting the job that somebody told you is a good job. Now, the problem with this is that extrinsic motivation only works well for some things. It actually does work moderately well, or even pretty well, for rote tasks or systematized ones. If you're trying to incentivize people to stuff some envelopes faster, if you give them a cash prize for the person who does it best, that might work. But instead, if the task is, how do we, is the way we should really convince our customers to do what we want them to do to send them something in an envelope? Now, that is not a rote systematized task or figuring out what should be on the page that gets stuffed in the envelope is also not a rote systematized task. And in fact, extrinsic motivation de-incentivizes. And, and study after study has shown that. Now the person that's applied this theory, self-determination theory, the most to legal education and to law students is Larry Krieger. 
who's written a body of articles about it, and he's also teamed up with Ken and Shel Sheldon, who's a psychologist. They've done empirical studies of law students, important studies on law school depression, law student depression, and he also works a great deal with CLE because he's concerned about how these kinds of extrinsic motivation, in fact, create unhappy and unprofessional lawyers. And in this little booklet, he links up these kinds of behaviors that get learned in law school and then create problems throughout the profession. So again, here's another nifty slide from the legal ed uh, video that you can watch. The three basics, autonomy means the desire to control our own lives. Mastery means, in simple terms, the desire to get better and better, that's something that matters. And purpose is acting in accordance with our true selves, acting something beyond ourselves. Now, let's apply that to teaching. Autonomy supportive teaching, and many studies have been done about it, a lot of talk about it in K through 12, is the notion that first you try to give choice as much as you can. So choice of topics, people can do research on. The flipped classroom is about choice, where and when people are when they do things, how they study, choices in composition of grade, a range of ways. The second aspect, though, is when you cannot give choice. So as an employer, as a teacher, as a teacher, we have things that we really believe people need to learn in our class, and there really isn't a choice about them, at least from our point of view. Well, then what the teacher needs to do is to explain why. You know, why is this thing important for you to learn? Why do I want you to do this, and why do I even need to think you do it, need to do it this way? The third thing is, though, to take their perspective, to understand how this feels to the learner, how it feels to the student who's being asked to do this task, and to communicate that we care about how it perceives to them. Now, mastery, again, is, it's not an end, it's a mindset. It's not some notion that there'll be perfection and you'll achieve it. The notion is throughout your career, it's the essence of lifelong learning. That's a journey that you'll be taking for your whole life and you're attempting to get better and better. It's definitely not about sorting out the top 10%. It is about having a whole class of people who want to become legal professionals and thinking about what they need to master in order to achieve the goals they want to have for their lives, serve their clients well, and so on. And of course, purpose, again, has to do with helping people figure out what they want to do with their own authentic selves. Another dimension of self-determination theory as a basic human motivation is also the need for connectedness and relatedness. The notion that we all want to be connected to other people or something beyond ourselves, our communities, and so on. So back to Larry Krieger and his booklet. He self-publishes these booklets for about a dollar, and I buy them with my faculty account, and I give them to students in my externship class, and I give them out of my professional responsibility class. I have a journal option in my professional responsibility class where students can write five two-page journals for a little bit of extra credit. And so over the years, I give them also a set of, I give them broad choice about what they do, but I give them a list of possibilities as suggestions. One suggestion is they can react to this booklet, which is a very popular one. And I would say I've had 100 journals about this book. And one thing that's struck me is how many of you use the same words. This booklet is about how moving away from the intrinsic motivation you came to law school with to these external factors creates stress, anxiety, depression, things that are reflected in statistics about law, law students. And so many students say in their journals, I thought I was the only one. And here's a class of second year, third year students who've been sitting side by side with all these other people who felt the same way they did. And they still say, I think I'm the only one. Now, about several years ago, I was reading journals. I picked up one, and I read the journal. And the, one of the first sentences was, because this person had been in my extern class the previous year. And she said, well, you gave out the booklet last year in the extern class, and it changed my life. <coughs> That really got my attention. <laughs> she said, and I'm reading her words, it never dawned on me before that I could fix the way I felt. And then she said how she taking her back to think about why she went to law school, what the intrinsic motivations were. And she said, but then I realized I'd moved away to extrinsic ones, to be in the top percentile, 
to outperform others, to get a better and more prestigious job, and to have pride in all the wrong things. And that's the moment I could say, that's when I'm a teacher. So, you want to look at the footnotes? <laughs> <laughs>